Stephanie Kwame here from the CAD Academy. The CAD Academy is a pre-engineering, pre-architecture program with STEM-based uh, curriculum. As you recall, or maybe don't recall, we had a architect take on a high school architectural drafting class here locally, and he had been using 2D drafting. And the good thing, or the opportunity for the high school here, is that we've ha overbuilt and the architects are scrambling for any type of work. This particular architect had worked with commercial and custom homes, and um, this was a great opportunity for the students. And as we were uh, doing this project, th he showed a lot of uh, fear and um, fe feeling like he would lose control or of the project as well with this package and when in fact uh, it was really uh, he, g he gains control over the package and uh, we talked about how there is a software manufacturer that's in the same business that does releases every year and sometimes features get put into that software package and they don't quite work and I think that adds to the fear factor of giving control of a project over to a piece of software whereas the uh, Graphisoft Archicad program has been around since 1984. It's been uh, number one in Europe for a very, very long time. It's the largest uh, architectural CAD company in the world and is gaining strength in the U.S. So basically you can, you can trust it, but it's just knowing the tools and you knowing the tools that allow you to feel confident about it. So what he did is uh, after we got the walls in, the details in, and got the floor plan pretty settled. He came in with a set of hand-drawn drawings of this residence. So this residence was built before CAD days. And a couple of things crossed my mind. Aren't these drawings a work of art? If your CAD instructor is having you do board drafting, you thank him because it truly is a work of art. And uh, another thing crossed my mind is this poor gentleman, knowing how many reiterations we did of the floor plan, that uh, he had had to redo these beautiful hand-drawn drawings over and over and over again. And how wonderful it is in a BIM software that I can change something here in this space in my first floor, and that would be reflected in my elevations, be reflected in my schedules, and make everything well is always perfect over here and the chances of making mistake are uh, much less if you only have to do something in one place. Well, one of the things he was really concerned about is sections, and um, he was worried that he couldn't put the pen types in, he couldn't put the hatching in that he wa wanted, because again, it's a, uh, architects have that very personal touch. So we went to docu a document so we've been working a lot here in the design area but document contains some documentation and this refers to the construction documents and um, you can see that you can do 2D drawing here as well you can do elevations there's some elevations pre-done and some details and today we're just going to talk about doing a section so if I select section here I get a hint below enter first note of section line so I'm going to go ahead and just do a section across here. And then the next thing is where are you looking and how far or how deep do you want this to be? So I'm going to select there and it's a little bit at an angle which will make it a more interesting section. Now if I go over to my navigator under sections, we didn't have anything before and now we have section one. I click on section one and this is what we see. And uh, the issue being that there needs to be some hatching there to show to indicate what type of wall this is and there needs to be maybe some hatching up here to uh, show insulation and some other items that we don't have and one of the ways you can do that is you go to the arrow to bring this up for editing I'm going to select these two walls shift to add this other wall right here and go up to this and I need to show that that is CMU or that is masonry block and say OK and now the hatching is showing there properly that is the way he wanted it. We also don't have ground but we do have our slabs showing but anyway putting in materials you'll, you can figure out how you can select and edit anything here and put in materials. One way you can put in and have it show ground is by merely putting in under design a mesh 
and a mesh uh, is a simulation of ground and it needs to be below the building and uh, sometimes when you put it in most of the time it's going to be coming in right at ground and it, that means that our um, the um, slab would not be showing and it would be kind of interfering, interfering with our house so we don't want that so we're going to take this and lower this down and I need to lower it just a little bit more. I could lower it exactly and that's the way I should have done it. But I'm just going to visually bring this back up to there. And so now if I go back into that section you can see that uh, it does have, that's the condition underneath the um, house. Uh, also a, a lot of people just use a line. So I could just draw a line across here or I could just draw some simulated earth underneath here with my line arc tools. But if I select line, if you go to that's a drafting line. If I arrow over here you get all kinds of different line types that you can use like property lines. So we could put something like this underneath it that would uh, simulate um, some drainage of some sort. I mean again I'm, this is just all hypothetical. I'm not doing it to teach you what you should be doing but to show you where these tools are. So I know we're going to do a wonderful section section for uh, this architect and, and he is uh, very much worth my time to help him out because he influences 21 future architects so that's why I'm, in, I'm having a great time with them and enjoying it very much but hopefully you learned something from this today if uh, there's questions that you need answered go ahead and send me an email I'd be delighted to answer them my name is my email is stephanie at the thank you for watching <laughs>